Welcome to lesson 8.4, properties of rhombuses, rectangles, and squares. So the goal for this lesson is by the time we get through the notes would be for you to be able to use the properties of these three special types of quadrilaterals to solve problems. Now, in our last couple lessons, we already looked at properties of parallelograms. And what you'll notice as we go through these first three definitions, all three of these figures, a rhombus, a rectangle, and a square, are special types of parallelograms, meaning all those properties of parallelograms are true for these shapes. So these shapes will have opposite sides being parallel, opposite sides being congruent, opposite angles being congruent, etc. So everything that we know is true for parallelograms is also true for a rhombus, a rectangle, and a square. So let's look at the definitions to make more sense of these three quadrilateral types. A rhombus is a parallelogram with four congruent sides. So we don't care necessarily about the angle measures. We just know if it's a parallelogram with four congruent sides, then it's a rhombus. A rectangle is a parallelogram with four right angles. So now we don't care about side length, but we care about the angles. If all four are right angles, it's a parallelogram, or the parallelogram is a rectangle. Then we have a square. And the square is a parallelogram with four congruent sides and four right angles. So if we take the rhombus and the rectangle, put them together, that builds our definition of a square. So then we get into our three corollaries. So obviously the first corollary, the rhombus corollary, comes from that definition of a rhombus. It says a quadrilateral is a rhombus if and only if it has four congruent sides. So any four-sided shape, quadrilateral, is a rhombus if and only if it has four congruent sides. So that tells us a square is a special type of rhombus. Then we get the rectangle corollary, which states a quadrilateral is a rectangle if and only if it has four right angles. So as long as your quadrilateral has four right angles, you can classify it as a rectangle. And then the square corollary, which states a quadrilateral is a square if and only if it is a rhombus and a rectangle. So if it has four congruent sides and four right angles, it is a square. And then we have our overlapping Venn diagram here to kind of just give us a visual of those corollaries. So if we're just thinking about parallelograms, meaning opposite sides are parallel, this whole big rectangle here would represent all parallelograms. So we have some outside that do not qualify as rhombuses, squares, or rectangles. Then if we have four congruent sides, we know it's at least a rhombus. If it has four right angles, we know it's a rectangle. And if it has four right angles and four congruent sides, then it is a square. So our first example here, for any rhombus, QRST, decide whether the statement is always or sometimes true. Draw a sketch and explain the reasoning. So we know the vertices going around are QRST. And in part A, they want us to say, is it always or sometimes true for this rhombus that angle Q is congruent to angle S? So no matter how we draw it, Q and S are opposite angles. And according to theorem 8.4, opposite angles are always congruent in parallelograms. So that means in the rhombus, QRST, angle Q and angle S, because they're opposites, are always going to be congruent. So that's always true. But what about adjacent angles like Q and R? 
That is only sometimes true that angle Q is congruent to angle R. If QRST, that rhombus, is a square, then all four of the angles are congruent right angles, so then this would be true. But if it was not a square, like our one over here on the left, we would see angle Q and angle R are supplementary, meaning they add to 180, but they're not congruent. So it's not true in all cases. So Q being congruent to R is sometimes true. Example two asks us to classify this special quadrilateral. So classifying means we're naming it as specific as possible. So is it a parallelogram? Is it a rhombus? Is it a rectangle? Is it a square, et cetera? Well, if I look at this quadrilateral, they gave me the markings for four congruent sides. And then they told me one angle is 70 degrees. So if it has four congruent sides and one angle is 70 degrees, we know it doesn't have right angles, so it's not a square or a rectangle. And because we don't know about the angles being right angles, but we know it has four congruent sides, we know it's a rhombus. In example three, part A says for any rectangle, EFGH, is it always or sometimes true that side FG is congruent to side GH? Explain your reasoning. That is only sometimes true in a rectangle, that those adjacent sides would be the same, and that's only true if it's a square, because then all four sides are congruent. But in other rectangles, it's okay to have a length that's 12 and a width that's 8, so it's not always true. And then in part B, it says a quadrilateral has four congruent sides and four congruent angles. Sketch and, or sketch the quadrilateral and classify it. So if I'm sketching a four-sided figure with four congruent sides and four right angles, that results every time in a square. Now we get into our three theorems. Theorem 8.11 or 8.11 states a parallelogram is a rhombus if and only if its diagonals are perpendicular. So classifying a parallelogram as a rhombus, this way we're just looking at the diagonals. So parallelograms are rhombus if and only if the diagonals are perpendicular meaning that diagonal db and ac cross at 90 degrees. Theorem 8.12 or 8.12 says a parallelogram is a rhombus if and only if each diagonal bisects a pair of opposite angles. So diagonal db here would have to bisect angle d and angle b splitting them into two congruent angles. Or diagonal AC would have to bisect angle A and angle C, splitting each one of those angles into two congruent parts. If that happens, then that parallelogram is a rhombus. And then we can tell if a parallelogram is a rectangle using theorem 8.13 which states a parallelogram is a rectangle if and only if the diagonals are congruent. So in this case, if our diagonals are congruent, meaning DB here is the same length as AC, then we know that this parallelogram is a rectangle. So now let's look at a couple examples, putting together everything that we know. So an example for it says sketch each figure and list everything that we know about it. So if I have a rectangle A, B, C, D, so there's my sketch. I know that a rectangle is a special type of parallelogram. So opposite sides are parallel. A, B, parallel to D, C with the single arrows. 
AD, double arrow, parallel to BC with a double arrow. Then I know, because it's a rectangle, I have four right angles. So angle A, B, C, and D are all marked as right angles. We also know opposite sides, we already set our parallel, but they're also congruent based on the fact that it's a rectangle. So side AD is congruent to side BC, and AB up here with the double mark is congruent to DC down here with the double mark. And then we also know that the opposite angles are congruent, so D and B, A and C. Consecutive angles are supplementary, so like A and D add up to 180, A and B add up to 180. And from theorem 8.13 that we just had here, we also would know if we drew in the diagonals, they bisect each other and are congruent. So there's a lot of things we know about a rectangle based on just all the different properties we've looked at. In part B, we have square PQRS. So sketch in my square. And I know in a square I have four right angles, four congruent sides, opposite sides are parallel. So top and bottom had a single arrow, meaning they're parallel. Left had a double arrow, right had a double arrow, meaning those are parallel. So what we know about a square is that it's a parallelogram, it's a rectangle, and it's a rhombus. All of those put together. So that tells us opposite pairs of sides are parallel and congruent to each other. Again, we have four right angles. We would know if we drew in our diagonals that they are congruent that they bisect each other, and that they are perpendicular. So it would be all three of these. And then we also know the diagonals bisect each pair of opposite angles. So because a square is a parallelogram, rectangle, and rhombus, all the properties of parallelograms, rectangles, and rhombuses are things we know about this square. Then we get into our real life example here, thinking about carpentry. You're building a frame for a window. The window will be installed in the opening shown in the diagram. So here's our opening. We know that left side's 44, right side's 44, top and bottom are 33 inches each. So it says the opening must be a rectangle. Given the measurements that we have, can we assume that it is a rectangle? Well, we know the top and bottom are each 33, right and left are each 44, so I do know that the opposite sides are all the same length. So that tells me it's a parallelogram. But we don't know anything about the four angles. So because I don't know about the four angles, we can only say this is a parallelogram. We do not have enough information to say that it's a rectangle. Part B then gives us some more info. It says we measured the diagonals of that opening. One of the diagonals was 54.8 inches and the other was 55.3 inches. What can we conclude about the shape of that opening? Well, according to theorem 8.13, a parallelogram is a rectangle if and only if the diagonals are congruent. But our diagonals, are 54.8 and 55.3. So because these are not congruent, this is not a rectangle. And then our final example for today's notes says, suppose we're measuring only the diagonals of a window opening then. If the diagonals have the same measure, do we know that window is a rectangle? So you don't need to worry about measuring four sides. You simply can measure the diagonals. If they are congruent, then according to theorem 8.13, yes, we will always have a rectangle. But the main idea for today's lesson goes back to the fact that a rhombus, rectangle, and square are all special types of parallelograms. And then 
properties of parallelograms are true for each of these, plus their own unique properties from the definitions and the corollaries.